Welcome back everybody. This is a continuation of my random topography generation tutorial video three where I will be showing how you can add trees. All right, so we're going to want to take this grep right here and in case you don't remember, let's preview this on and um, preview this other stuff off. So all this is, is a surface that we want to add trees to. Um, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is generate a tree in Rhino. And we can do this quite simply. Um, I'm going to create quite a simple tree. You can create whatever tree you want, and then we'll make an algorithm that places the tree on the surface where we want it. So the first thing to do is place a point, which is going to be the base of the tree, and we're going to map this tree from this point onto different points on this surface. So to create a tree at the base of this point, I'm going to create a curve. And then I'm actually going to switch out of this view for a second. Um, I'm going to go over here. And right now, as you may be able to tell, I'm creating sort of the cross section of a tree. And all we have to do is take this curve and revolve it, revolve it around this central axis. I'm gonna go up here and click full circle. Now you can see we've got a nice little abstract tree. It's the wrong color, but that's okay. We'll apply color in Grasshopper. So first things first, I'm gonna open up another BREP node and I'll right click, set one BREP, and now our tree is in Grasshopper. And one more thing, I'm gonna bring this point that we've just created, set one point, and I'll select this point. Now we have our tree and where it is, and we have to find the points that represent where it's going to be. First, I'm going to label this as tree rep. So to find the points where it's going to be, I just want to uh, populate this surface. And to do that, I'll use populate geometry. Populate 2D is for populating a flat two-dimensional space. Populate 3D is a way of populating kind of a, a cube-shaped 3D space. But we just want to put points on a surface, so we'll put use populate geometry. And as you can see, we've now got all these locations. But some of this is going to be underwater, and so we want to refine this list to get rid of any points that may be underwater. Actually, though, first, I'll plug in 120 to change the number of trees. I'll call this number of trees. And so how we can filter these points to only keep the ones that are above sea level is by finding which ones are greater, which ones have a Z component that's greater than, or it's called larger than in Grasshopper, a certain number. But first we have to find the Z component of each of these points. So we'll deconstruct these points. Actually, something interesting is that a point really is a vector. Um, so if I plug in these points to vector, it works the exact same way as if I deconstruct them as points. And that's because all a vector really is, is something that starts at the origin and ends at a point. And that is what attributes its directionality. And as you can see, the first x component here is 16.9, and the first x component here is 16.9, so they work the exact same. Just interesting to know, but you don't really need to know that for this video. But if we take this z component and we test if it's larger than, for instance, 1.0, let's view our output by using a panel. And slash slash is a simple way of creating a panel. Um, and I'll plug this in. And as you can see, all of these are for the most part larger than 1.0. But if I plug in maybe 1.2, we can adjust this input until you see now some falses pop up because not all these points are greater than 4.0. So all we have to do is delete these points based on this result. True represents uh, keep the point because it is larger and false represents delete that point because it's smaller or it's lower. So if we use coal pattern, this is a way of taking a list of points 
and deleting them based on true or false values. So I plug this in. Now you can see I've only kept the points that have a Z component that is larger than four. So I'll preview this stuff off. And as you can see, I can now adjust where the tree line is. So I'll call this tree line. And all we have to do now is, or actually I'm gonna wanna see the surface. All I'm gonna wanna do now is move this tree from this point to all of these points. And that's actually quite simple. I'll use a move node. And I'll use a vector 2D, or a, a vector two point, which describes where I want to move it from and then where I want to move it to. So this tree is always gonna be moved from this point at its base and actually, Let's plug in this, because we want to move the tree, sorry about that, we want to move it to these points. So I plug in that vector. <laughs> now you can see we have this. And um, I could scale my tree down to kind of fit the, uh, the size of my surface. And then I want to add some randomness into um, the scale and colors of these trees in order to sort of simulate the real world. First things first though, I've got my trees. I can preview this stuff off and I can turn on this custom preview that we created in the last video. And um, now uh, let's, let's randomly scale these trees. So, if I take this tree brep and actually I will copy and paste it and I'm gonna drag this output over here because we're gonna wanna be using it up at the end of, of this list. Um, so I'm gonna scale it using scale NU. Scale NU is a way of scaling things based on the x direction, so it's kind of scaling it one dimensionally in the x direction, one dimensionally in the y direction, and one dimensionally in the z direction to have a composite scale that, that scales in all three directions. Um, but, but this gives you specific control over which directions you're scaling how much. So if I scale this tree brep um, randomly, in the x direction. How much do we want to scale it by? Well, let's have the largest scale remain one, so unchanged, and then the smallest scale, here I'll construct a domain to plug it into this range of scales. So, so we'll leave the largest scale at one and we'll change the smallest to be maybe three or 0.33. And now um, I want to change the number of random sizes to be the same length as the number of, of points that we're going to be moving these trees to, because that's the number of trees that we will finally have. So for the number in this random scale, I'll use list length. Now we'll use the length of this list of random points. Right. As you can see, um, they're scaling based on this center right here, and that's why they're, they're moving out of place. But if I instead scale with the center of the plane being at this point, now we've got a bunch of different sized trees all at the same place because they're kind of scaling around the center of the tree. Um, and we're, we're actually gonna wanna plug this randomness into the X and Y dimensions. So now we're, we're really shrinking its size on the, on the 2D flat plane. And then we can just create another copy of this randomness and plug it into Z. And we'll just change this seed, increment it by one maybe, or actually we'll make this two times X. So now we're inputting a different seed for the height of each tree 
than we do for the width of each tree, but nothing's gonna happen really until we plug in our seed to these seed inputs. So here's this seed and here is this seed. Okay, and now we have a bunch of randomly scaled trees and instead of moving the, um, the, the one tree into place using all these motions, if we use the bunch of trees that we've just created and move them into place, now you can see our trees are scaled um, sort of randomly. And if we change the amount, you can see the, or the smallest scale is what's changing because that's the start of the scale domain, which represents the smallest possible scale factor that we will plug in. Okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time making it look pretty. You can do that on your own. I am going to now just add some random colors. You may know how this is gonna go based on um, how I added colors previously, but we're gonna use the HSL node and a custom preview. And we're gonna to wanna to preview these using this, except that's not the hue we want. We want some random hues, we're adding randomness. So we'll add a random node, plug in list length in order to create the right number of random numbers. And for the range, that we want to these random numbers to span, we'll use a construct domain because we want all these numbers to be between a start value and an end value. We'll change that from 0, 0.00 to 1. And numbers from 0 to 1, when plugged into the hue, they span the whole rainbow. So from 0, 0.00 to 1 is how we can control the amount of the rainbow that we cover. So if I switch this to be, I don't know where I think green is gonna be, and then this as well, now you can see we can get some good variation in our tree color as, long as, our, as well as our tree height and scale. Now this concludes the tutorial. I know it doesn't look so pretty here, but with all of these inputs that we've created, you have the power to customize this terrain generator to whatever your needs are. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to support this channel or moreover, support the algorithm that will allow this channel to grow. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day.